All right, guys, part two. Part two of alternatives to discontinued and or badly reformulated fragrances. Are you enjoying this series of videos? I did several videos on just uh, alternatives uh, of uh, fragrances in general, and this particular series is of uh, fragrances or four fragrances that are discontinued and or badly reformulated. I've got 10 here plus a bonus option. Great alternatives to fragrances. They're not all necessarily cheap alternatives and also not all of these are clones they're just alternatives and usually alternatives doesn't mean dupes or clones but there are a few dupes and clones in here in this video as well but either way find out about my alternatives to discontinued and or badly reformulated fragrances coming right up Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Is there a fragrance that you love that's been discontinued or really butchered, badly reformulated? Do let me know what it is. Put a comment down so I can find out so I can continue doing these videos. There's a lot of fragrances that get discontinued and, uh, and or really badly reformulated. So I'll probably continue doing more of these as long as I have a great alternative for each uh, fragrance, of course. But why don't we go ahead and get started. The first fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is Jean Desprez Balabarsai this one right here you know I I really enjoy this particular fragrance but there is a really great alternative that I have from an indie niche house out of uh, the UK that I think will be a great alternative for this and takes me back to something that's even more richer and fuller and skankier I think this fragrance has gotten reformulated and this is the EDP version not the Parfum version, which I have sampled before, which is really luxurious. And I don't know if they use real authentic animalic notes because this is an animalic fragrance. And from what I've read online, it's supposedly one of Michael Jackson's favorite fragrances. Uh, is that true? But uh, the, the dupe for this one, I feel like is this right here. Salome from the house of Papillon Artisan Perfumes or Papillon Perfumery. They're similar fragrances, they're very ambery, they're sheeper style, but for me, I feel like you can totally notice the synthetic skankiness in uh, Bala Versailles by Jean Desprez, but with Salome, it smells so freaking fantastic, so vintage, so good, that it really knocks the uh, Bala Versailles off wherever it's standing on. Because the Salome, you know, it's got the Castorium, the Hyrax, there's Cumin, Jasmine, Oak Moss, Carnation, and Styrax. Everything just feels more alive. And when fragrances, you know, do get reformulated, uh, I feel like they lose its luster, like they just don't have the oomph to them. And even though Bala Versailles, I think, They've kept it as best as they can. I feel, I feel like it doesn't, it's missing something. So when you compare the two, they're not gonna smell totally identical, but put your nose on Salome if you like the skank of Bala Versailles and you'll see what I'm talking about. But either way, a great alternative for Jean Desprez Bala Versailles is Salome from uh, the House of Papillon Perfumery. So moving on to the House of YSL, and I've got a couple of YSL fragrances in this list, probably two or three. This is the first one. This is Rive Gauche Pour Homme, one of my all-time favorite fragrances when it came out in the uh, mid-2000s. And they created a couple of flankers and it got discontinued out of the canister bottle. Uh, it's a Fougere barbershop fragrance. It smells like shaving cream. They put it into this square bottle and after that it was in the square bottle it used to be dark then it went clear and then probably around 2018 2019 it got discontinued in the square bottle but I know this fragrance has a lot of fans if you're a fan of it I've got a great alternative here this is Athena's De Flor this one right here very very inexpensive alternative and I would say this could be a clone or a dupe of uh, Rive Gauche Pour Homme and for me I always felt like Rive Gauche Pour Homme was not like a beastly fragrance it kind of had its lightness about it but great smell really did smell like shaving cream really the, a job well done i believe it was created by uh, jean jacques cavalier who does the louis vuitton fragrances now but uh, athena's de floor smells really really close if not identical also has a little more thickness than the original but it's definitely very very similar and if you're looking for an alternative a very inexpensive alternative at that because it's around 65 dollars for 100 ml uh, and I don't know how much these are now and if you can even find them. 
but the the deal with the uh, floor is lavender oak moss geranium there's star anise rosemary bergamot patchouli tonka licorice and cloves there was something special about this particular fragrance there's other alternatives out there like uh, you can go with Hubegon's Fougere Royale or Bracken Man by Amouage but if you're looking for something really really close if not an identical fragrance try Athena's De Fleur at a very, very inexpensive price. Uh, I really love it and it totally takes me back to uh, Rive Gauche Pour Homme. And Rive Gauche Pour Homme I don't wear much anymore. It's kept in a cool, dark, dry place uh, because, you know, I don't want to run out of it because this is all I have. But now I have a great alternative. It's De Fleur from uh, Athena and it smells just like Reef Gauche Pour Homme does. This video might also go a little masculine leaning because a lot of the fragrances sadly in this video are masculine fragrances, but sometimes the alternatives might be unisex. In this case, this is a fragrance from the house of Paloma Picasso. It's Minotaur uh, and a great alternative for it would be Wake Up World from uh, the house of uh, Parle Moi de Parfum. In this case, Minotaur is a masculine targeted release. Wake Up World is a unisex targeted release. And I was a huge, huge fan of Minotaur in the early 90s. I wore it. I especially loved this bottle so much. It meant a lot to me because it had this kind of frosted effect to the bottle and really loved holding it and spraying a ton of it. It used to be beastly back in 1992, 93. Uh, it is such a really bad reformulation now. So bad, you can still buy it for about 25 bucks or 20 bucks, but it smells like fruity water now. It doesn't even have uh, any kind of a depth to it. But uh, Wake Up World, uh, is a great, great alternative. It kind of comes really close to it. It's created by the same perfumer, Michel Almarac. He created Minotaur and he created Wake Up World. And Wake Up World for Parle de Parfum is a brand that has been started by the son of Michel Almarac, who created both fragrances. But what I like about Wake Up World is vanilla, benzoin, ambroxin, green apple, damask rose, the hydromyrosinol. And for me, what I liked about this fragrance, the original, is the fruity amber, but had a freshness to it. So it had its depth, it has its intensity, or had its intensity. So it had the ambery touches, but also the fruitiness in there. So you could wear it in the summertime. It won't kind of like be cloying, although it was a bit much more cloying. But here with this one, in the wake up world it's so great it smells so alive it's like something's just been the way they've created it just takes me back to the way the original fragrance is if you wear the minotaur now you'll notice how bad and flat the fragrance is just imagine opening up a can of coke and leaving it there and it's it's lost its fizziness it's just gone flat and that's how minotaur wears now but Wake Up World to me is a great, robust, and a very lively version of the original fragrance. They're not identical, but definitely smells very, very similar and takes me back to how Minotaur by Paloma Picasso used to smell. So Wake Up World is a great alternative to Minotaur by Paloma Picasso. All right, moving on to the House of YSL again, another male targeted release, and both of these are male targeted. So uh, of course some women wear ma masculine fragrances. I think uh, they enjoy the kind of notes that are in masculine fragrances. So maybe some, some of you ladies might like this one. But we're going to the House of YSL, as I said. This is one of their early, early fragrances for men. It's Pour Homme in the reformulated uh, bottle. It used to come in a red bottle or a clear bottle with a red cap, I believe is what it used to be. I've forgotten how it is. And it's kind of a cheaper fougere fragrance and really fresh and lemony. And a great alternative for me is Scandal Pour Homme Parfum. You can also go to Scandal Pour Homme uh, Cologne, Parfum Cologne, I think it is, from the house of Raja Parfums, because it has that cheaper uh, fougere barbershop qualities that uh, the original Pour Homme has but the poor ohm has gotten really badly re reformulated in this version so it's very very light and I I know it's been removed from the USA website I don't think it's on the French website I could be wrong but I believe it's completely gone but a great great very lively robust and really rich version of uh, YSL's Pour Homme is a, you know, Scandal Pour Homme. And again, as I said, you can go with Scandal Pour Homme Parfum or Scandal Pour Homme Parfum Cologne. Uh, the other one's fresher, this one's deeper and richer and features lemons, lavender, oak moss, ambergris, musk, bergamot, pettigran, basil, mint, and tarragon. So it's very aromatic and herbal. 
and also very, very citrusy green. Very, very fresh and musky as well. Uh, I think it's a great, great alternative to YSL's Pour Homme. So moving on to the House of Dior, another male targeted release. This is, of course, Fahrenheit in this bottle. I'm not talking about Fahrenheit Le Parfum or Parfum. This is the original Fahrenheit that came out in 88. Another fra fragrance created by Michel Almarac. He, he was uh, top of his game in the late 80s and the 90s. This fragrance has gotten watered down. I think it still smells great, but it is not what it used to be. And something in here is missing that it was there. The depth is gone. It's much flatter. It smells pretty good, but there's something missing in here. There was always something, this really thick medicinal spiciness that, that's kind of gone. For me now, it's more just violet leaves and the freshness and ozonic qualities the violet leaves has. The leather is hardly there now, but man, it used to be like, it had this weird cinnamony spiciness. It almost came off like red hots to me when I wore it in the late 80s, hence the red bottle as well. But now there is a version you can try from the House of Amouage called Portrayal Man. It's basically taking it to the more leathery, animalic direction of the original Fahrenheit. A uh, very, very deep, dense, dark, woody, and very masculine fragrance here. So the Portrayal Man does feature violet leaves, and of course Fahrenheit does as well. But with Portrayal Man, you also have vetiver and juniper berries. But there's a lot of spice here. It doesn't have the um, like the Red Hots type of spice that I, I remember Dior Fahrenheit used to have, but definitely has spices. It's really, really rich and heavy. Could come off animalic and sweaty with the Portrayal Man, but it's totally lots of violets, very green, earthy, woody, a bit floral, and definitely uh, animalic and leathery as well. So Portrayal Man is a great, great alternative to Fahrenheit, the original in the Eau de Toilette, and I think Portrayal Man also has great longevity compared to Fahrenheit in the Eau de Toilette in the current version. It's an Eau de Parfum, but the, the kind of notes that are in here just make it last a long, long time. So those are the kind of fragrances you guys want. Portrayal Man, as I said, is a great alternative to uh, Fahrenheit from Dior. Moving on to the house of Tom Ford, we've got unisex fragrances finally. We have a Vert de Bois from Tom Ford, one of my favorite green fragrances that launched in that uh, trio or four different uh, green fragrances. It was Verte Ensemble, Verte Bohème, Verte Fleur, and then uh, Verte de Bois. Verte de Bois had that kind of licorice ouzo accord that I really, really enjoyed here. But it also had a bit of a mossiness, like a wet, mossy, green, earthy, kind of like a forest floor type touch. But really a great fragrance. Sadly, it's discontinued. I only have 150 ml bottle in addition to this. This was like almost empty. Uh, so I'm, I, I have to use it very, very sparingly. But there's a great alternative here in a fragrance by Aesop called Eremia. Once again, they're not similar fragrances, but it kind of gives you that effect of the greenness. Uh, it's galbanum, iris, and yuzu. So it's kind of very green and bitter, but very fresh and aromatic, bit powdery and citrusy as well. But a great alternative to Vert de Bois if you have been looking for an alternative to Vert de Bois. Aesop fragrances are a little underrated. They have stores that uh, they sell, you know, like skincare products and things like that. And I feel like they do a pretty good job with their fragrances. They do have a cult following and there are several of I have every single one of their fragrances I do enjoy the fragrances a lot they're different uh, a little more hipstery kind of fragrances but I like them a little on the more expensive side as well but if you you know familiar with Tom Ford prices you kind of have an idea of um, the fragrances with the Aesop but in general if you bought this uh, you know, like if you bought this, it's definitely less expensive than, uh, no, I'm sorry, the Aesop is less expensive than the Tom Ford. But either way, try Eremia if you're looking for an alternative to Vert de Bois. I think it's a great alternative and it'll remind you of Vert de Bois. For sure, it reminds me. The next fragrance is also unisex, but one of my favorite fragrances from Byredo was, uh, or is still, Unnamed. Uh, unnamed is a very violet forward fragrance but it was uh, released as a limited edition, pulled, brought back, and it's been pulled again. And sadly, you can't get unnamed anymore unless you find a bottle somebody's selling. But I liked its freshness. I liked that it's kind of uh, very violety, kind of ozonic touches that it had and spices and things like that. But you know, as I said, it's really tough to find now. But there is a fragrance called Fire from the house of Eloria, and you can take advantage of that and get that in, addition, in place of the unnamed. So what I liked about 
uh, Eloria's fire is the violet once again and they mention violet but I feel like there's violet leaves in here in addition to the violet so it's violet and violet leaves do have a different scent profile the violet goes powdery and floral for sure sometimes kind of candied violet kind of a thing but the violet leaves goes ozonic and watery but still a bit powdery so I feel like with this one you get both of it there's lime leather camellia nutmeg iris lemon amber and rose as well and I think it's a great alternative to Bi Byredo's unnamed I think the price is also not as expensive as the Byredo but it is a 50 ml versus 100 ml here but if you're looking for that really great fresh spicy kind of uh, violet uh, fragrance that uh, Byredo's unnamed is and can't find it definitely try Eloria's fire I don't know if you guys know this house Eloria I have a full video on the channel of the house do go ch check it out and uh, watch the video but Eloria Fire is a great fragrance alternative for uh, Byredo's Unnamed. Moving on to another unisex fragrance, going to the house of Louis Vuitton. It's Sunsong. I know many of you are messaging me where you can find a, you know, a bottle of this because it got discontinued, sadly. This and along with Cactus Garden got pulled from Louis Vuitton. I know there were a few other fragrances that got pulled as well, not a lot. But it's a fresh, a citrusy kind of floral fragrance, so it's citrus flowers and things like that. But a great cheapy alternative would be Talia Saudis or So these liquid sun um, now this is a really inexpensive fragrance you can probably find it at the discounters for about 25 bucks for 100 ml and even I've mentioned in my videos you know they kind of look like it's a dupe or something or I don't know what they were doing but uh, maybe it's a just a fluke thing that the colors ended up the same because they launched uh, launched around the same time but either way a great alternative for Louis Vuitton Sun Song is Talia Saudi's liquid sun the only only thing with this one is you will definitely notice that it is the less quality materials used to go into the making of this fragrance because I can tell it's, it smells not as good and quality wise with the ingredients they're using for Talia Saudi's Liquid Sun in comparison to Sunsong. But it's that Neroli, Mandarin Leaf, Frangipani, Solar Notes, Orange Blossom, Coconut, Peony, and Musk in Liquid Sun. But you know, I have to be honest, it doesn't come off uber beachy as the notes are mentioned in Liquid Sun. In comparison to Sunsong, they mention Citron, Orange Blossom, and Musk. So for me, it smells really close to uh, Louis Vuitton's Sun Song even though they give you these notes that you think it's gonna go kind of beachy smelling because it's got the coconut and the frangipani and things like that so Liquid Sun by Talia Saudi is a great alternative to Sun Song by Louis Vuitton that one's definitely a cheap alternative so the ninth fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about is gonna be another Tom Ford fragrance so the unisex offerings here once again and this is a fragrance I hated so much I really hated this particular fragrance but for some reason I ended up getting an offer from someone who was selling their bottle and I ended up buying it for a great deal. I wanted to have it because it is discontinued, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. It didn't come with the box, I bought the large decanter. It's Oud Mineral from the house of uh, Tom Ford. I know there's a lot of fans out there and a lot of you are looking for this one. Look at how much there is in it, so I have to keep it in safekeeping. Uh, I got this for about $280, so it's very, very inexpensive and it was worth getting because it is discontinued and now that I do the sniff sessions, consult sessions here with clients, it would be great to have. But I know it's tough to find. If you're looking for it, I think I have a great alternative. It's from the House of Imaginary Authors. It's Whispered Myths. Not identical, but similar ideas, kind of that oud fragrance with a marine and seaweed touch so it can go a bit fishy smelling uh, definitely prominent there but uh, whispered myths is very inexpensive and it kind of has similar ideas so it's Campo Cambodian oud melons cedar ambrette and honey and you've got that idea of the melons giving you that kind of like sea smell uh, it is used to create the marine aquatic smell and fragrances but of course you've got that kind of animalic oud in here with the Cambodian oud so the two together creates a kind of an effect of Oud Mineral. So if you've been looking for a bottle of Oud Mineral, you can't find it, uh, definitely try Whispered Myths. Not identical now, don't think it's going to be a dupe, but definitely it does the trick for replacing Wisp uh, Oud Mineral. So Whispered Myths by Imaginary Authors, a great alternative to Oud Mineral. And the next and last fragrance I'm talking about, uh, it is Midnight in Paris from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels. 
One of my all-time favorite fragrances when I first got into the reviewing game, it was uh, readily available for like 25, 30 bucks. So it's really sad it's discontinued. It was one of the best designer fragrances and it was also a unisex offering. So sadly it's gone now. I always thought Midnight in Paris kind of reminded me of Bulgari's Black. That is discontinued as well. So I can also feature that or mention that fragrance in this video as well. But a great alternative to those two is Prada's Luna Rosa Black. Not identical, not a dupe, not a clone, but it'll remind you. For me, the Midnight in Paris is a lot more syrupier and amberier, and there's something in there that kind of hints at Luna Rosa Black. And the Luna Rosa Black for me is a lot powderier and a bit vegetal, so not as ambery and wet syrupy like the Midnight in Paris is. But I think it would make a do the job or the trick, or just a suggestion, go try it out yourself to see if it'll work for you. But either way, alternative to Van Cleef and Arpels Midnight in Paris is Luna Rosa Black from Prada. And that's the last fragrance for you guys. Let me know your thoughts on these alternatives to these discontinued or badly reformulated fragrances. I'd like to find out. And as I said, if there's another fragrance that um, is discontinued that you love or it's reformulated that's, that you love but, and you were looking for an alternative for it, do let me know what it is. Put a comment down so I can find out. And go one step further. If you have a great alternative to a discontinued or badly reformulated fragrance, do let me know that as well so I can check into it, get it by and put it in the studio. So I'll have it to showcase in videos and then of course to show the uh, customers or clients that come in to do sniff sessions and consult sessions. Either way guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. So as a bonus option for you guys, I don't have the original fragrance because I never owned it, but a lot of people mentioned this is a great alternative. It's Gucci Pour Homme 2003 version, uh, which is a very popular and sought after fragrance. And it got discontinued probably like as soon as I got into the reviewing game in 2012. So I never got a bottle of it, but a great alternative for Gucci Pour Homme, the original from 2003, is Bentley for Men Absolute. You can find it at a deal. Uh, it's a very smoky, woody fragrance with that papyrus note in here so it's got a very kind of an earthiness about it but very smoky touches as well cedar olibanum pink pepper papyrus oud sandalwood ginger amber and oak moss very masculine fragrance very smoky a bit church-like but lots of woods earthiness from that papyrus note and the oak moss kind of gives you that earthiness as well but a bit ambery when it's drying down and there's some zing in there from the ginger but a great alternative for Gucci Pour Homme 1 or the original Gucci Pour Homme from 2003 is Bentley for Men Absolute. Uh, if I can find a bottle of Gucci Pour Homme 1 from 2003, uh, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Hopefully it's not expensive. I think I would need a bottle of Gucci Pour Homme, the, the one or the original from 2003 and also Gucci Envy. I've been wanting a bottle of that as well. Sadly, I can't find it, but hopefully soon. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. Have a good one. Goodbye.